Welcome to the Baby You've Got This podcast. My name is Kim Kent. I'm so excited for you to be listening in today. I am a sales-based business coach. I specialize in mindset and I'm also an online business professional and network marketing professional. I love to help ambitious women who feel stuck, unclear and tired of not getting results to achieve the skills to build a six plus figure business and overcome all the BS that is holding them back from genuinely achieving the goals that they desire. I do this via my transformational and unique coaching experiences. Plus you get all the free goodness from tuning into my podcast. I'm all about empowering and inspiring women. So I really hope that this episode today gives you so much value, so much inspiration, and gets you to think greater. If you'd love to learn more about me and check out my offerings, you can visit my website, www.kimkent.com.au. Otherwise, sit back, relax, (laughs) tune in, and I really, really hope you enjoy this episode today. Welcome back to another episode of Babe, You've Got This. This is going to be a really powerful episode, especially if you actually go and create what it is I'm about to share with you. For those of you who follow me on social media, you would see that I post a lot in my stories about reading my vision statement every morning. Well, disclaimer on that, since becoming a mum, it hasn't been every single morning, but I definitely have been reading it as consistently as I can. And I really wanted to talk about the power behind it, like what is a vision statement, what is it meant to do, like what's its purpose, my experience, my, I actually have a really incredible story from one of my clients, they've had the most amazing experience and amazing results from creating their vision statement. And I will even share with you the formula to get started. And I just love this. So it was back in 2019 when I first learned about this style of, what do we call it? Just this, this method, this activity. And it was called a mission statement. Now, it really doesn't matter what you call it, mission statement, vision statement. I went through a phase where I called it my empowerment statement. Um, I think at the moment on the typed up version of mine, it's called my empowered vision statement. Like it really does not matter. The idea of it is to state your mission and vision of your life. It's um, my best way to describe it. It's your manifesting, it's your manifesto, it's your hard copy PDF, unless you keep it on the computer, which like I do at the moment, but ideally you print it out. It's your PDF manifesto for the vision of your future that you want to bring into the present now. So the future or the life that you desire to create for yourself. So the vision for your life probably could have just said it is, it creates the vision, you create the vision for your life. But you know, I like to add extra words in and over explain because it's just part of my juicy charm. So yeah, it was in 2019 and I went to this personal development course and it was a three day course and part of it, oh, it, it taught me so much. A lot of the stuff I talk about has come from a lot of the aha moments and breakthroughs from going to these personal development courses and seminars and actually doing the work. One of the things we did was create our mission statement for our life. Now, I was someone who failed English in high school. Like, I could not write. Like, I remember writing an essay once thinking it was the bee's knees and I failed it because my grammar and my comprehension and context was all off. So it, it, it really sucked for me because, you know, you had I had to fit into a box. So when it came to writing this, I'm already having the thoughts in my head, like, I'm not a good writer. I'm not very creative. This is just going to be boring. And yeah, I already started having the mindset struggles <laughs> before I even started this activity. But that's why there is a formula that you can follow to create it. And the thing that I learned was you've just got to get it down on paper. And what happens is over time you evolve it. And I'm what now? 
19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Wait, we're in 2022. It's only going to be three years. Gosh, I feel like I've been doing it for much longer. In the space of three years, my mission vision statement went from a one-page document to it's now a five-page document because it's ever-evolving and ever-changing. So I now feel like when I read it that it's so juicy and so full of, like I connect so emotionally to it compared to when I first wrote it, which seemed almost like dot points. But the, the point is, it's about getting it on paper. It's about putting it, putting your vision down on paper so you can start to bring it into fruition. So I'm going to refer to it as a vision statement going forward. But again, you can call it, you can call it whatever you want. So your vision statement, as I said, it is a written document projecting your desires of the vision of your future and what you would love to create and live now. And the amazing thing about it, it's all written in pre- present tense. So you're, you're writing it slash reading it as if it's already happened. And you're talking into the different areas of life of what you desire in the nine to 10 separate areas of life which I have talked about in past episodes and um, working out what it is you want in each area. Because when we set goals, a lot of us, most of us actually only really set goals in a couple of areas of life because when the other areas we're satisfied with, we don't even focus on that. So for example, I'm an ambitious woman. My goals, my focus of my goals are always to do with finances and career and I never even consider the family relationships, the friend relationships, the sexual partner relationships, the, what else is there? My, my health and my, my mindset, even though if I think about it and, and differentiate and and compartmentalize, I definitely have desires and goals for every single area, but I'm just driven by, or my focus leads to just a couple, one to two areas of life. So this is why it's really important because for us to feel an abundant, wealthy life, we want all areas ticking the boxes. We want satisfaction in every area of life. Otherwise, like we're settling. So this is what the vision statement does. It goes through every, you, you establish an goal set I'm trying to get the words. <laughs> Goal set for every area of your life, but you're writing it as if it's already happened. And will you work out, will you will you establish like what is your superpowers? What brings you to the table? So it's an incredible self-worth activity. It helps you to really embody what it is you want, the energy that you know you need to feel. It helps you bring, bring yourself out of the lack and scarcity mentality and get your focus and clarity on where it is that you want to go and, and where you're taking your life your health goals, your business, your family, your whatever it is. And then there's also the part of it where you you actually state like by this process, so your mission, how you're showing up, what it is you're here to do, your purpose in life, and by you doing that, what is it that you wish to receive? Like one of the juiciest things I'll share now that it just, I just absolutely love it. And I know it's getting closer and closer to actually happening is I have always wanted to live in a house with ocean views, with soft grass in the backyard. So I even have in my vision statement the house that I'm, I will live in. But that you speak as if you're already living there. So it's our next house, and the dream house, the family headquarters, where I can feel the soft grass under my feet, the big spacious rooms, gorgeous amount of sunlight, a balcony where I can do my morning rituals. Uh, ocean views I have got these all in my vision statement because that is a part of the vision for my life where I would love to live so I hope that's explained to you what it is (laughs) and I kind of did start sharing my experience but I kind of went on a tangent as I do Um, but I want to share the power behind it you're, and if you've already been listening to me or reading the personal development books and, and involving yourself in all of this self-human development stuff, you would know how powerful our words are. Words are everything. We speak our reality 
into reality. Like what we speak, we speak into our reality. So if you're constantly negative or doubting or all that side of things, you're constantly going to attract and see the things in your life that support those feelings. Where if you can work on and shift your language into the more abundant, loving, positive language, you're going to attract more things into your life that support that feeling. So your words are so powerful. So by having this statement, you're stating and declaring to the universe of what it is you desire, how it is you want to feel, and what you're going to be rewarded with in this lifetime and it's so, so, so powerful. And as I was saying, that's what that's why we do it. You create this vision statement and it gets you focused, especially when you have those mornings, which I know for a lot of us is almost every morning. We wake up and the brain wants to keep us in our comfort zone. The brain is uh, wired to find the negative in things so it keeps us safe. So we see the negative in lots of things to be like, oh, no, that looks dangerous. That looks... That's a negative thing. Let's avoid that. Let's stay safe. So our brain is wired to find, to see the negative in things. It takes a lot of work and a lot of effort to reprogram and, and really focus on the love and the abundance and the, and the more positive side of things. So we are not, well, I shouldn't speak for we, I should speak for myself. I often wake up and my brain automatically wants to go, oh my God, I'm tired. Uh, like I don't want to get up or what do I have to do today? And especially being a new mum, it's literally, oh my God, I'm tired, I need more sleep, which I always feel like I need more sleep. So can you see how my brain's programmed to think negatively? So what I do is I read my vision statement first thing in the morning and it grounds me. It gets my focus clear on on what it needs to be and what I'm working towards and what my purpose is so so my actions for the day can follow suit. So I know where I'm headed. And trust me, there are so many times where I feel like I get off track or I get distracted or I'll go out and be and socialize too much and, and feel off track or whatever it might be. I use my vision statement to bring me back into alignment. And when we are in a space and feeling of alignment, we feel clear in our head. So we have mental clarity and we can see and feel the abundance and wealth and prosperity in our life which at the end of the day, all of us are chasing because we all want to feel that happiness, the joy, the abundance, the wealth, the freedom. And it's all there, right? But we have to create it for ourselves. So this vision statement is, is literally a statement helping you create your masterpiece life, create the life that you want because you are the master creator of your life. And I talk about this a lot in my episodes. So now I'm going to get a bit sciencey for you. And as you know, I just love talking about the science of things. So again, with the power behind the vision statement. So we have something in our brain called the reticulator activating system, the RAS. So what this means, or the best way to describe it is you want to buy a new car. Actually, this happened to us. I'm going to use me as a first-hand example. We wanted to buy, or we have actually bought, and this was in my vision statement, uh, uh, the new RAV4, the new Toyota RAV4. Ever since Daniel and I decided to buy this car as our next car, I saw one on this road every single time, all the time. And I'm like, oh my gosh, so many people have this car. Why have I not noticed it before? It's because it wasn't in my... RAS. It wasn't in the RAS. It was, it was oblivious to me because I wasn't focusing on it. But now that it was in the forefront of my mind and it's something I was focusing on, it was a goal that I'd love to achieve. I was seeing them everywhere. And the example that I first heard and was taught to, so I could understand this was, do you notice when you start thinking about red cars and then you all of a sudden see red cars everywhere? So it's another car (laughs) example. But you'll notice this. And so the point of getting your, uh, using your RAS to your advantage is in your vision statement, you're reading this daily. You're keeping your desires and where you're going and how you're showing up and the feelings that you want to continually feel. You're keeping that in the forefront of your mind. You're keeping that in your reticulator activating system. And what's going to happen is you're going to start attracting the opportunities that are going to allow you to keep creating what it is you've put in your vision statement. 
And the thing is that it comes in some way, shape or form. When you do manifest, you set out what it is that you would love. It doesn't necessarily mean the universe is going to deliver it in the exact way you expect, but it does come to you in some way, shape or form. That is one thing I always chat about with my clients is, look, you've got to set the goal, establish the outcome, but let go of it because it's going to come back to you in one way, shape or form. You just don't know yet, but as long as you know where it is you're going, as long as you have clarity on what it is that you're, you're wishing to create for yourself. So this is the power behind the vision statement. Focus grows where energy flows or energy flows where focus grows. Now I can't remember the actual saying. (laughs) Oh, mum brain. So the more you focus, wherever you focus your energy, you're going to get more of that in your life. So this amazing, incredible, life-changing document is to help keep you on track, aligned, pull you out of any doubt and all the shit that our mindset can encounter, especially when we first wake up. And it's a powerful process. So I absolutely love it. Now, I want to talk about my experience more with it. And gosh, it's been absolutely incredible. So I've constantly evolved my vision statement over the years. So it's because I would print it out, and I would read it, and then there'll be some mornings where I'll tweak it. So I'll be like, oh, I, I actually want to add that, or I've actually started to achieve this. I, I want to upgrade that or take it out. And don't forget, your vision statement, statement is not a to-do list, and you tick it off as you go, and then it's all done. You want to, you can tick things off because you're, it's a goal and you're achieving them, and you want to keep moving the goalposts and keep expanding because we are growing in life. We're either growing or you're dying. And if you tick off everything and not replace it with something, uh, you're going to have a vision statement that then has nothing there, which means you have no vision for your future. So it's constantly ever evolving as you expand and grow. And yeah, my experience has been, it literally was a one page, pretty much one sentence per area of life and what it is I love to achieve. And uh, there was a few things in there, especially like the financial goal. And then once I hit the financial goal, I was like, well, I need to expand this now because I've hit it. Oh, what is it that I want to create? What is my relationship like? Well, um, all of this X, Y, Z. And here's one thing. I know I'm probably sounding a little bit all over the place, but I don't really have exact moments where, oh my God, this happened. Oh my God, this happened. Because things were ticking off and ever expanding, but then my self-worth grew. And I saw that I was actually worth more and I could achieve more. So I kept expanding and evolving. So I just find it so, so powerful. But one of the things that I had on there that was, um, oh, this was so, so profound. I love it. I had put down that, well, what I was noticing is a lot of the people in my circle and my audience and my, you know, even friendship circles were really negative. There's just so much negativity or a lot of victim. And don't get me wrong, I can play the victim very well. And the saying goes, you are the top five people you spend the most time with. So whoever you're surrounding yourself with the most, you are your personality and your your thought process and your energy levels are going to match theirs. And I, I was noticing, I just felt like everyone around me were just it's being victim or finding the problem in things. And I noticed I was doing it a lot too. And so in my vision statement, I talked about my friendship circle and who I surrounded myself with. Short story long, because <laughs> I feel like I've already given you the long story, is I then started having a few friends, like we would have a falling out in a way, or I would say something that was taken the wrong way by them. And I was like, oh, like how how are you being a victim of what I'm saying? Like, I'm just communicating. You weren't understanding me. What happened is I had these falling outs in a sense of the relationship ties were cut in a way. And at first the victim part of me got hurt and I was grieving the friendship a bit. And then I realized, oh my gosh, I asked for this. I asked to be surrounded by wealthy, ambitious, open-minded, high vibrational, soul-led people, X, Y, Z in my vision statement. And what was happening is I was starting to lose the connections with the people. Like they were drifting away with the people who were negative, 
victim me, the, the energy that I didn't want to keep surrounding myself with. So when I had that realization, I'm like, oh my gosh, I manifested this. This is, this is happy for a reason. And it made me feel really good. It's like, right, now I'm allowing space to attract in more of the higher vibrational people because I am vibrating at a higher level now. So that was something that was really, really cool. Um, other things that I have achieved from having my vision statement is certain promotions within my business and uh, um, like holidays and just, well, the, here was this one, right, that I really wanted to hit in my network marketing business. My next goal was this next position that was a new title that the company brought in and a new and a higher bonus. And I was like, right, that's my next goal. Now, I was in a position with my business with how network marketing works is I had a really, really strong leg, which meant I had to do a shitload of work on the other legs to actually be able to get to this promotion based on the percentage split you can take from each leg. If you're not aware of network marketing, don't worry about the nitty gritties. If you do understand network marketing, these words would make sense to you. But what happened was I was like, oh, when am I going to hit this? Because I actually am so close numbers wise, but I haven't got the right percentage split between the different legs in my business. So I I can't actually get it as quickly as I'd, I'd, I'd hoped. And what actually happened is I had two people leave the business, which was a godsend and a blessing. But at the time, it shook me because they were two big leaders in my business and they saw that the grass was greener somewhere else and they wanted to jump ship. Side note, jumping ship never works because they, both these people don't even do network marketing anymore because they tried other companies and never got to where they did in the same one that I was a part of. That's like, if they did, awesome, but it just, they didn't. And every time I've seen someone leave a company, uh, it, most of the time is they end up failing elsewhere because they keep jumping ship thinking the grass is going to be greener in another company in another way. Anywho, I was, I got a bit worried because I was like, oh my gosh, like two big, two leaders are leaving. What is that going to mean for my business? It's going to lose, I'm going to lose sales. I'm going to lose X, Y, and Z. But by them leaving, it actually opened up the opportunity for me to hit the next promotion. And within a month, I was able to hit that next promotion. So my point of that example is I set out what it is I'd like to desire to hit this bonus. I need X, Y, and Z. It's in my vision statement. I've already achieved it, blah, blah, blah. Now, that's what I wanted. I thought I was going to get it one way, but the universe delivers in one way, shape, or form in a way you might not often expect. And that's what exactly what happened. So... I thought that that was um, pretty cool because at the end of the day, I asked for it and I, it was delivered and it was in my vision statement. So it's just such a powerful, powerful tool. And right now, my vision statement, I couldn't be more proud of it. Where it is to the day right now, we are in, as I say this, it is May 2022 and I now have a baby uh, I'm now a mother, so my vision statement has even evolved more and my vision for my life with a fa having a family that I've created myself, it actually just gets my juices flowing <laughs> and I absolutely love reading it. And the mornings where the self-doubt does creep in and the scarcity does creep in, I get straight into reading this and set and remind myself exactly where I'm going and why I'm here and tapping in and attuning in to how it is I want to feel. So two more things. I want to share with you my client experience and also the formula for it. So this is just mind blowing. I have one of my gorgeous clients. Her, she started working with me six months ago. We've just wrapped up our six months coaching and she came to me for life coaching. <laughs> um, I usually attract uh, business coaching because it's life and mindset, which is so is your business is your life anyway. But she came to me for life coaching and she was like, <sighs> one of the things she really wanted to do is like, I really want to fall in love, Kim. I really would love to attract a man into my life. And I was like, look, I can guarantee and promise a lot of things, but I can't guarantee and promise you're going to fall in love because we all know that. Like that's, I can't promise I'm going to find you someone that, that you know, I just couldn't make that promise. 
But the other things about um, getting a house deposit saved, getting her money in order, helping her health, helping her self-sabotaging um, voices and her the self-doubt mindset, I could definitely reverse and change and work with all of that. Which, side note, we totally did. And she's her money and wealth principles are set up in place. Uh, she's got on track for her house deposit. Her health and mindset have never been better. But this is is what is amazing in her vision statement i got her to literally manifest the type of man and love she wants in her life and it wasn't about describing he's six foot tall with brown hair blue eyes blah 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 i'm like no it's you need to describe the type of relationship that you're after what is it that you want to feel how what is the dynamics what um, what are the boundaries all of that stuff and she did this i kid you not and I got her to read it every single day. She actually recorded it and listened to it every day and evolved on it. And within two months, she's like, Kim, I met this guy. I was like, oh my gosh, tell me everything. And she's like, we've only been on one date and I'm not getting, I'm not wanting to get ahead of myself, but I'm definitely wanting to learn more about him because he ticks a lot of my boxes. So a few weeks on, a few coaching calls on, they've been dating and she's like, Kim, seriously, this guy ticks everything in my vision statement of what I wanted and what I was looking for, but he wasn't, he he doesn't look like the type of guy I would normally go for. And I was like, see, it's not about how, you can be specific on how they look and, and whatnot, but at the end of the day in a relationship, isn't it what you ultimately want to feel and how you want to be treated and the communication and the connection and the life you want to create together. At the end of the day, it's all about how you want to feel. So I can now, I guess, promise that if you do coaching with me, I can find you love. <laughs> uh, she, yeah, so oh, that was amazing. It just, it, I love it. And even she was so in shock and in awe of how powerful this vision statement is. But the thing is, guys, you have to commit to it. You have to read it daily. You have to, whether you feel like it or not, and you have to give you, you have to put the energy in to actually feel what it is, the feeling that you want to feel more of. It's all about that embodiment, which is why I went through a phase of calling it your embodiment statement, because you need to embody it now as if you've already achieved it. That's how the law of attraction works. So then you can attract more things into your life to support those feelings and so on. So then this is the formula. Now I can share with you what to get, how to get started, but it is a bit of a process and I prefer to do it like on a call with someone or um, in a workshop where you're there grounded and, and so on and so forth. But here are some really powerful questions that you can answer that you can help, that can help formulate it for you. So First thing is to do, make sure you have your pen and paper. So maybe you want to write, right now, actually, this is what you want to do. You want to be listening to this podcast and you can pause it as you go with the pen and paper in your hand because you really want to answer these questions as I ask them to you and what comes up straight away. So the first question you're going to write, you're going to answer is, so sit there, take a deep breath in, eyes closed, just ground yourself down. If I told you, you had six months left to live and money was not an issue, how would you spend your time? And I just want you to write it out, what comes to mind? So that's a very powerful question there. You can obviously pause it and spend the time doing that. Then the next lot of questions are, you want to ask yourself, what are your superpowers? What are you really good at? Or what are the things that you would love to be even better at? What do you bring to the table? So write them all out. Um, What is it that you love spending your time doing? So say if money, you're not going to die in six months, okay? Just let's retract that now. Another another question to answer. If money and mindset, you have freedom with money and mindset, there's nothing holding you back, no time limitations, no money, no mindset limitations, what would you spend your time doing? Write it all out. Then what you also want to do and write um, out is what is it that you would love to 
create and what is it that you would love to receive from showing up in this world for the mission that you're on for, for what you do so this is the the goal side of things so writing down everything that you would love to achieve and receive and think of the areas of, of life health mental and physical um, family finances career your friendship circle your sexual partner your vocation what you love to do is hobby wise and, and think about all that and write it all down and you might think of these questions and like you have the dot points come up that's totally fine but then you want to evolve on it and here's my last little tip uh, with this there's a little there's some guidelines you need to follow for making it to make it work everything you write down has to be in present tense as in I have I am I am grateful for I love so on and so forth you, you can't use things like I will or I'm going to or where you put it in or I should or so on you don't want to put it in future tense because if you talk in future tense you're constantly going to leave it in the future where well, you need to speak as if it's already happened now since this is a podcast episode I didn't want to overwhelm you with like I just wanted to give you the the short version the simple version for you to get started but what you can do is you can connect with me and ask me questions about this connect with me on social media ask questions about this Feel free to send me your vision statement that you write up and I can even give you some pointers um, just having this extra pair of eyes look at it. And the thing is you want to be able to declare it to the world. You don't obviously have to. I, I don't tell everyone about it and what I write in it. But if you asked me, and maybe that could be an episode, to read you my vision statement, I would do it because I'm declaring to the world what I'm worth and, and what I would love to receive. And if you can't do that, then you're never actually going to receive it. You want to be able to declare it out there. So I'm kind of trying to, you know, get rid of any objections you have. And if you want to send it to me and have me look over it, this is what my clients do. They send me in an email and I have a look and give them some pointers. And it's usually I'll catch where they've used future tense, not present tense in their talking. That's all. And then also the other hot tip is be as specific as you can. If it's monetary goals, be specific. If you say, I'd love to earn more money, you might earn an extra dollar for the year. Technically, you've earned more money than before. So prayers are answered. So you have to be specific in how you want to feel, what it is you want to attract in and achieve and receive. <sighs> so that is my short, powerful lesson on creating a vision statement, which... Oh, I just, I know there's so, so much more, but I have a book coming out soon, but not too soon. And I'm going to go into more detail about this anyway. So you actually have like a hard copy to read, which I think is going to be so powerful and so helpful for you. But I'd love for you to get started. Just get started on this, or maybe you already have one and this is your sign to rejig it, get really fucking clear on what it is that you want to create more of have a look at what you've already created and, and get rid of the things that you feel like you're just doing it because you have to. You want to read each line and feel like, yep, yeah, this is aligned with me. You might have times where you read it and you feel like, oh, I feel like a fraud. Oh, I'm not actually going to get what I want. Like, oh, like the self-doubt. Like you put down an income goal and you're like, oh, am I even able to get that? You have to recognize that, no, that's just self-sabotage kicking in. Get rid of, say goodbye, don't need you, thoughts, and then get back to embodying what it, what it, that is and the feeling anywho i hope you enjoyed this episode and please feel free to share this um with anyone you know who needs to hear it i totally appreciate you for listening and for following on and for sharing and getting the word of this out there it, just, it honestly means a lot so i hope you enjoyed Thank you for tuning into this episode. I'm so grateful that my voice landed in your ears and hopefully you got epic value out of this. Now, it would mean the absolute world to me if you could share this, be a part of the bigger mission and the bigger vision of empowering more women just like you to receive this gold and create those changes in their life that you and I both know they need as well as us. And you can also leave me a review. That would be absolutely amazing. I would be over the moon. We can head on over and leave me a review. 
And you can also check out my offerings at www.kimkent.com.au or make sure you're following me on social media. My handle is at Kim Kent and then two underscores. Can't wait to chat next time.